So welcome uh, to the presentation about the IPTC Video Metadata Hub and uh, the subtitle Metadata Like for Photos has been taken intentionally because it meets something what has happened some time ago in exactly this room. Okay, let's start first with what we are talking about. So uh, for, for photo businesses which are the main audience of the CP Congress, they say, okay, we have been working now with uh, photos for a long time, but now our customers are asking increasingly, uh, we would also be interested about videos about something. So we have photos about the event, do you have also at least a short video about this event? Okay, so we should dig into the video area and what does that mean? Okay, so we have the, the, the still images, but we also have moving images. And uh, that means you have visual content, uh, one is moving, the other one is still, but they have very many things in common. So they are very similar. So where and when it happened, who and what location is shown, who created it, and who owns the copyright, of course. <coughs> okay, so IPDC took this seriously and said, okay, uh, what was, uh, and we dis uh, created a roadmap for that. So as just said, uh, in June 2014, it was the photo metadata conference of that year where we had a focus on video uh, metadata. So what are their expectations? What are the requirements? And we had their collection. And then we had a discussion and it was one of the conclusions at the end of the discussion Speakers and the attendees ask IPDC to create a set of video metadata similar to the photo metadata. So this was an input uh, to the already existing thoughts about video metadata inside IPDC. So uh, only a few months later in October 2014, IPDC established, so remember IPDC is a membership organization about uh, 55 members uh, from uh, news providers, from newspapers, and also from system vendors, companies are uh, our members. And there was a joint decision, okay, let's start work in this area. So a metadata working group was established, and it was the goal uh, to create a metadata scheme for this purpose. Okay, and then exactly two years later, in October 2015, the video, IPDC Video Metadata Hub Recommendation 1.0 was released and agreed, and it is available at this URL on our IPDC website. So if you go to IPDC website, already on the main landing page, you will see as a key topic, video metadata. Good, so let's have a look at that, what is the come out of this uh, activity for two years. And I will uh, fragment it into three parts. First, to show what is included into the video metadata. Secondly, uh, what, uh, what, what it provides in terms of uh, features. And then in the third session, we will have a uh, third part. We will have a look into what you can, how you can use it, what you can do with the video metadata hub. Okay. So this there is the landing page and yeah, so we have, I've created there a table. In the left column you see the metadata from the photo metadata specification and in the right column you see the metadata fields uh, from the video metadata uh, specification recommendation. And I've uh, split this up so the IPDC has a user guide for photo metadata and there are 
the fields are grouped there, it follows this grouping. So uh, let's compare general content metadata fields. You see the highly liked and also discussed in the area of auto-tagging uh, fields, keywords, a CV term about the image, genre, uh, they are there in both standards, and also the headline, the description, and the rating, which is new in the photo area, uh, but uh, they are now in parallel. And then you see, of course, video is moving images, therefore they have some specific, like a dope sheet. I'm not aware that ever a dope sheet for a photo has been created. So it exists only for the video metadata. Then have, have a look at, at metadata about a person. So uh, there are persons shown in image for photos, also on video, but also persons heard because uh, videos is also you see something and you hear something and maybe you see nothing and you only hear uh, people from the off. And also this be a person could be recorded by this metadata field. And there could also be a transcript because this is also relevant that people are able to read what has been said, said in the video. Okay, then more model information is more typical of uh, photos, but the more uh, uh, law relevant or legally or relevant metadata model release, uh, they are also available for photo and video. Then about locations, you see actually the same. Where a photo slash video has been shot, the location, and the location you see in the photo or in the video. Other things, you have organizations which are featured by photo or video, a related event, a product shown in the image. So reminder, you are able to add there the GTI encode. I think maybe you all know them as the barcodes. If you buy something, uh, then you see the barcode on the product that's exactly this code which can be entered there. Then more photo specific is that we have artwork or object in image because currently uh, pictures in, or paintings in a museum are primarily recorded in a photo and not in a video. Maybe this will change over time uh, because there is also artwork on video, of course. There are some real uh, uh, video artists and the same as for model release for property release. Then rights information, you see there also a high uh, synchronicity between both. So create of the image, copyright owner, copyright notice, a credit line, and you can embed encoded rights because there are already machine neural rights formats available and how to embed that. Uh, this is provided by these two uh, fields. Licensing, yeah, you can also do the same for photos and uh, videos. The usage terms, rights and licensing terms, you can add people in the supply chain and you can explicitly say who is the licensor. Administrative metadata, you also see them highly in sync. Not so much in sync, of course, are the technical metadata. The photo metadata, have been, I think, from the very start of having digital images, have been uh, controlled uh, by SIPA, by the Japanese Organization of Camera Makers, and they are called the EXIF metadata. So if you look at the list of uh, defined EXIF metadata, it's primarily metadata about technical features of this photo. The camera and uh, what lens has been used and so on. This is not available for uh, EXIF. Uh, let's say there is no video EXIF, but there are similar standards for that. And so we uh, try to uh, take out the most prominent ones uh, because the problem is there are some different formats for that. So you can express uh, technical metadata in quite different formats. So we, we will uh, dig into that later. Okay. Then an important question is, of course, a still photo is a still photo is a single photo. 
while if you have uh, a video, it could be made, of course, of multiple clips. And if you want to have metadata about these clips, and maybe also if you have, uh, the, let's say, the same footage, but it changes over time, so maybe people are passing by and you want to figure out from second 10 to second 15, you see these people, and from second 15 to second 20, you see these other people. This is not possible because you can apply multiple sets of these metadata I've just presented. So all the metadata from the first table to the last table can be applied multiple times to a video, and then there are only uh, definitions. Is this a set of video metadata for the video as a whole. So from the top, from the top to the bottom, or is it only for a specific section, a clip? And all these three sets of metadata can be applied to a video. Any questions about that? Well, uh, I think a first step is that you are able to apply different sets of metadata, uh, let's call it in your internal system. How this can be communicated to a search engine, uh, I think this is a little bit of a challenge because uh, also, as far as I know, a, a system like YouTube only supports a single set of metadata. Yeah, so you can, I think, easily uh, communicate the metadata about the video as a whole, but uh, how to communicate on YouTube, uh, similar Vimeo, uh, such systems, metadata for different clips, um, maybe this, this is even not uh, managed or included in the features of their systems. So you... Yeah, yeah, that, that of course, yeah. Yeah, but what is, also, what is absolutely surprising to me that as to date, that not a single asset management vendor, not a single platform for video, not a single stock agency has employed any of those, uh, that, 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 uh, that function, yet the length of video and the volume of video uh, within those libraries has grown exponentially. Uh. I would have to switch back to our roadmap. Uh, the IPC metadata have been released in October uh, last year, so it's now about half a year since then, and we we are trying to uh, reach out to to system vendors for that. Uh, but I have to say, it's yeah the usual communication between a standardization organization and system vendors. It uh, sounds interesting, but do our customers need that? So if you need that, talk to uh, the provider of your uh, system. Well, we created our own. I mean, we did this all on ourselves. We independently engineered all that. But I, what I would say is that the ability to extract or leverage uh, any one of those moments for, by, for met, the metric data that that would, that would provide anybody yeah. uh, is, 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 is reason enough to want to have it. I mean, the revenue that can be extracted from that is, well, it, 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 it's sky's the limit. Okay, uh, we'll jump into this use area now. So, any questions about the structure provided by the, the metadata? Yeah? Somebody asked how the metadata is attached to a footage clip. Okay, next step. I'll show it in a minute. Yeah? Okay, good. 
then uh, jump into what the video metadata hub has as key features. So first, what the video metadata hub defines this is exactly what I've just shown. So you have their uh, names and internal identifiers for fields, and then you have values. So this is what is controlled by the video metadata hub. And then we said, okay, there are already existing video metadata technologies available. So IPC has no intention to create something new, uh, but let's use them. And that's exactly what we have done. So we have defined a recommended mapping from the metadata uh, definitions into XMP. So all what you have seen there in the tables before have a well-defined identifier in XMP. So it can be implemented uh, by, by any system which is able to deal with XMP because that is only some additional identifiers, but if you have an engine which is able to process XMP, it should also be possible to include all these identifiers of uh, metadata which has been defined by IPTC for this purpose. So it's only an extension of the schema, but not of the technology. A second one is, so uh, XMP can be used for embedding metadata and can be used also for creating sidecar files. So then you have everything in XMP. But we are also aware that some users want to have their standalone uh, documents which reflect the metadata about a video. And for this uh, purpose, we have adopted the EBU. So EBU, the European Broadcasting Union, I think most of you know them, so they are behind, uh, let's say, the technical organization behind the Eurovisions, and they define most of the, uh, of the technical standards which are used in the broadcasting area in Europe, and also to some extent in, on other continents. So we decided, okay, there already exists something which is widely used, so actually all broadcasters, at least in Europe, use this uh, uh, metadata format, and therefore, let's do it, and this is typical use, uh, completely standalone. So not nothing to embed, but to send it on a special metadata channel. Okay, and then we have defined also a mapping as far as possible. So to clarify, the two green arrows show uh, complete implementations. So for each and every of the fields I've shown in the first part, an XMP or EBU core uh, specification exists, how to implement it on a technical level. But we have also something we call a mapping to more standards. So for instance, for the widely used QuickTime format, the Apple QuickTime, that covers, no, of course, not all of them, but on the other way around, you can say, actually, all the Apple QuickTime metadata fields can be mapped to an IPTC video metadata hub field. So therefore, it is possible to ingest all the QuickTime metadata into a system which is run under the video metadata hub umbrella. And the same also for the MPEG-7, so this is also a partially used format for metadata, so more in the MPEG context, and that can also be used in the same way. So you can ingest and you can write out to the system. So practical use case, you have a QuickTime movie, you get it, a clip, and you have a system which is run as a video metadata hub. So therefore, you can read the metadata out of the QuickTime movie. Okay, then you uh, ingest it into the video metadata hub system, and then you can out create outputs in quite different formats. So it's in fact a normalizer. You don't have to think 
okay, how should this metadata property now be, exp uh, what I've just read in from QuickTime, how to express this now in hmm, XMP, mm -hmm, in MPEG-7. You have a normalizer for that, and the name of this normalizer is Video Metadata Hub. Questions about that key feature? Sarah? What were all the question marks over the MPEG-7? Uh, which, uh, I've used the uh, typical uh, file extensions in, in uh, file systems, uh, but MPEG-7 doesn't have such a strict re relationship to uh, file extensions. Okay, three use cases. The first one is you are a collector of footage. So you see there you have there quite different sources, starting with a smartphone, having there uh, two professional uh, video cameras. So I try to cover the most prominent uh, camera makers in this area. And then you have there also, maybe in more in your businesses, not so unusual, you have there an SLR camera, which can be upgraded a little bit, and then you can also uh, shoot videos with this camera. So you take some photos, and then you uh, take a video with the same camera. Okay, regardless of that, they all deliver a video. So, then the metadata go into your video metadata hub system, and the important feature of that is people at your company have to know only a single set of metadata. So they don't have to switch their mind, okay, now uh, there is the set of uh, photo metadata, and then, oops, I have now to deal with uh, uh, f uh, the video, maybe taken actually with the same camera, uh, but now I have a completely different set of metadata for the videos. It is the same set, in fact. Maybe a few labels are slightly different, but uh, I would say 95% are, are, of the labels are, are identical. Okay, so that means you ingest them all and then uh, you have one system of metadata for both photo and video. The next one is, okay, now you have collected this. Now you have to export it and to sell it to your customers. So your dear customers have different needs. So they already queue up in front of your uh, cash and uh, so to pay cash and they say, I would like to have QuickTime. I would like to have MPEG-4 with XMP, please. Next one says, I would like to have an MTS file with PPCore metadata, because PPCore, uh, that's more an American standard for metadata of videos, uh, that is also one of the mapped uh, standards. Then, Another one says, I want to have MPEG HD422 with EBU core. So this is more a format used uh, in the broadcasting area. And the last one says, a little bit of everything, shaken and not stirred. You can guess what his name is. Okay. The solution field mapping solves that. You have metadata in the video metadata hub, so they're in this green uh, box up there, and then you are able to make all these customers happy. QuickTime, MPEG-4 with uh, XMP, MTS with PP Core, uh, EBU Core, and shake the notes to it. So there are some more standards for also, for instance, IPTC News and LG2 format. They are all mapped standard you can use for this purpose. 
The use case number three is damn metadata design. You say, okay, wonderful, how can I get such a, a video metadata hub system? Do I have to buy something completely new now? We've just bought a damn system one, two years ago, and now pff, that's not a good uh, message from IPTC to create there something new. Okay, we are aware and we have been talking to the dam system and they say, yes, we, we are able to uh, create uh, fields which are requested or asked for by our customers. Okay, let's have a look at that. So this is a snippet out of the specification of the IPTC Video Metadata Hub. You see there are some definitions in it Okay, let's have a look at that. So we have a recommended field label. We have definitions how to use that field so that the people in your company are, could learn, could dig into how to use that field exactly. Then there are some, also some hints on how it can be used, so it's not really a specification, but only uh, a, a notice, an informal notice. And then there is also a, a basic technical, specific, technical specification of that. Okay, so this is what the Video Metadata Hub provides to a dam system maker. So they can have a look into that. And this should be the goal, you'll get what you want. So let's go over that. Th this is one of the system which is able to do that and they already have to start it to implement that. So it's the portfolio system. So you will say you have there, uh, you define there the set of metadata. okay, video metadata, this is the asset, this is the video file. And then you have there a first set of video metadata shown for that. Okay, but how to extend that? That are screenshots from uh, widgets of the system by which you can extend the already built-in metadata. So you go there and open it, so you say, okay, this is a name for that, it has an identifier, you define the data type for that, you can also define for strings, a maximum length, for instance, and there further down, the metadata name is the identifier internally. So then the system should know, okay, I have to export this uh, following the IPTC video metadata hub uh, definitions into an XMP field. So this is there, for instance, the case. And you can have the multiple, so you can have their string, you can have their decimal value, so it's uh, something like that should be and could be quite flexible. Then if you look at that, if you have been uh, quite hard working on that, you can have a long list of metadata you have created for this purpose. Also the, the usual, uh, let's say guideline applies also to video metadata. Fields where you have no intention to use them don't have to be applied of course, but everything what you feel is necessary for your business, you can pick out and apply to such a system. And yeah, this could be the result, in fact. So a short wrap up. The Video Metadata Hub provides a single set of metadata for videos in different formats. So this is one of the big burden from videos discussed there in 2014 Oh, there are so many formats. Now you have a system to normalize them to a single system. Maps the video metadata to, uh, to the file and formats your customers' needs. So it's not something only internal for you. It is also a controller of a decent output for the needs of your customers. So it's not only for your benefit, it's also for the benefit of your customers and then, of course, also for you. It helps to tailor your DAM or MEM system to your needs, because there are clear guidelines, and I think most DAM systems which are able to uh, extend the system in an organized way, 
should have no problem to apply what the video metadata hub defines. So I would say the key message is the IPDC video metadata hub helps. I invite you to check the video metadata hub on the IPDC website. As said, there is a landing page and you can look into that and uh, see also the specification and any feedback and any questions, anything on that is welcome. Send it simply to the office at IPDC.org. It will be routed to the video metadata working group. Thanks for your interest and I would be happy to hear back from you.